Hello, I'm Roger Bisbee. I'm Robin Clevett, and we're both from the Skill Builder channel, and we have a, another one in our series of Traxel reviews that we're doing. Uh, we're going to add these all up at the end, and we're going to do a kind of comparison, uh, not exactly a head-to-head, -head. we're going to do something, yeah, something like a showdown, as our cameraman Dylan would say. <laughs> this we've got is a Bosch. A Bosch? Recorded, yeah. So bringing out the box. Right? So. And they seem to go for a Sortimo box. Do you know what? Is that, that is a Sortimo box. It is, it's a Sortimo box. It's a bit strange to me, yeah. but never, let's not dwell on the box. Let's have a look at this right. baby. Now look, before we go any further, all right? This yeah. is the Bosch, go on, what's it called? It's a GKT55 GCE, and it's part of their professional range, obviously. A lot of people say that this is almost identical to the Maffel. From a, from a looks and a shape and a style point of view, Let's get a Maffel, because right. we've got a Maffel here at the moment. We've okay. got that on loan. Let me grab that. Okay, you grab that, and we'll have a look. It's difficult to ignore the similarities between these two machines. So here we have... Ooh, I don't know, I don't know, I don't know. Hold on a minute, Roger. Let's look at it from a, a shape point of view. If I turn this saw on its side, and you turn that saw on its side, let's just look at the body of the motor to start with. I would say, apart from the colour, that's an identical shell, okay? It's an, it's an identical yeah. shell, okay. So the shell... Wow, I can see one big difference straight away. Front handle. Uh, so yep, yeah, this one has a front handle. It has no handle. Well, has no handle. So when they advise you to use a hand, uh, two hands on a track saw, with this one you're using the other hand is on the, on the motor. With this one obviously you've got the handle at the top yeah. to help you. What else? Oh yeah. Yeah. So obviously the blade change is quite unique on the Maffel where the door comes down. Right, so this one doesn't flip open. So this one is that push down. Oh, I've got to take something off here because that's restricted it. Right, so you have to do that straight away. So is that, that similar to the... Yeah, it looks like that the um, depth slider is exactly the same. Right, as let's well. have a look. Let's just have a feel of that one. Yeah, they both, they both take... They, they are. They're identical, aren't they? Yeah. They've both got the button to turn around to give you the two settings on and off the rail. Okay, now, they've both got this, but when you do that, that locks down like the Festool. Yeah, yeah. just like the Festool. That one is an open clamp, so there's a difference there. Obviously, that's got the open window as well, yeah. so you're getting air being sucked in through there as well as around the blade. So, what you can do, by the way, one tip I can give you there is that if you want to increase that airflow through around the blade rather than it being sucked in here you can just put a bit of masking tape over over the front of yeah, that over the bit, window just bit, just to do so effectively you make the same thing i would say that looks a bit more substantial than that i'm a bit worried about that i did have a double bevel mitre saw that was built like this you know the, the mm. bosch one and um it kind of, these things worry me slightly. It may be, it may be all right, but it may be one of those things where you don't sling around. Okay, it's got that strong spring. The base plate, are the base plates the same, Robin? Yeah, but I would say that in principle, they look the same, but clearly this one is a bit thinner, I'd say. The actual material Hang feels. On. Is that rocking? There must be something underneath it, is there? It actually looks like it's got some twist in that. I'm not joking you, that. Pop it back on that set. Yeah. Blimey. That's rock hard. Though. Well, that, if that's, if that's the case, if this is brand new, out the box, you're right. Yeah, that's in the, that's in the sort of casting of. Now that's, that's strange, isn't it? Because when you look at that housing and you look at, sorry, the base plate, when you look at that, is that a cast? Yeah, I mean, let's have a look at the side of that as well. I mean, they're like for like. That, that, they're virtually like for yeah. like, aren't they? Yeah, yeah. I don't, I don't, but they I both they both got this, which adapts to the Festool and yeah. other tracks. That's yeah? the bit you take off to go on the Festool. So this track. this track then, this would be the same. 
It is, look, it's got the joining strip. Yeah. This is the same track. It's the same length, it's 1600 it's long. In the Mephel. That's your packaging. <laughs> I was slightly worried there for a minute. Right, so you get two of these in the kit. Yeah. Nice. Now, let's have a look at that rubber. Is that one of those peel away rubbers yeah, that you it's, get? It's in the, yeah, it's extremely Yeah, easy. yeah, so it's not stuck on, so that's great. I don't think we need to worry too much. This is a joining strip to join them together. Yeah, just that's exactly the same as the um, Muffel. Slides in easily that way. Okay, so, so far, they're both 1400 watt motors. Yep. This isn't that high torque motor that this no. has got. The Cooper X motor on this one, so it's considerably cheaper. Now, I don't know whether we're unlucky. Well, we're, we're clearly unlucky. Or is it Bosch that's unlucky? Well, let's put it on the rail and see if it will run on the rail. I mean, obviously, let's clip that onto there. It's not good, is it? No, that, that, that quite honestly is going to give you... Yeah, I mean, to be honest with you, I would, I would say that that is something which would need to go back. Yeah, you, you, you wouldn't know. want to keep that, would you? This material just feels maybe... It's, it's a few mil thicker, I'm is not it? sure. I mean, it's just... It's hot. It has got a different sort of finish altogether, if you yeah, look at that. Yeah, but that's only a powder coat. But the, car the casting looks the same. Yeah. There's a couple of differences, like you can see those squares there, and we've got two squares here, for example, you know. Yeah. That and that is different to this. So we're playing spot the difference now. Yeah, let's, let's forget the spot the difference. Right. What we've said is it's very, very similar to the Mafel, but the Mafel did not come with a twisted yeah. base plate. And you've got to say, on that alone, you would have to send this back. If you've got a machine like that, you would be very disappointed, wouldn't you? You'd be going back. Because the one thing you don't want, this is a precision machine. And OK, when you're running through sheets of 8x4 and OSB mm. just for rough yeah, work. But if you, if you start doing anything nice, I mean, let's, let's, let's face it. You could use a circular saw. You could clamp up like we all used to. You could clamp up a piece of a level. Yeah, and run alongside run it. Run alongside it. So the, the benefit of, of the track saw is when it comes to absolute precision yeah, and, and preventing that breakout, isn't yeah, it? Absolutely. So that is the point at which you don't want any play. So, I mean, I wouldn't even want that, quite honestly, as my circular saw. I know. Even without the base plate, mm. you wouldn't. That would annoy the life out mm. of you, wouldn't it? Right? So where would you go? You know, where would you sit? There or there? I mean, that's terrible. We ought to just not review this, really. At this point, um, what I'm saying is, it's hardly worth taking out. Yeah, you can see that the wear right on there. We'll be just rubbing it across. You can clearly see, even the fact it's straight out of the box, yeah. where we're just pushing it backwards and forwards. It's wearing on the high spot or the low spot. I mean, that's yeah, obviously yeah. clearly a high spot. What we do is file yeah. it down a bit for him, yeah. send it back. But no, that's got some uh, distortion in it, which is unfortunate, really. We can only speak as we find, and uh, and that's not a good start for you, is it? We'll still run it through. We'll still give it a go in terms of grunt and everything else, see how that motor performs. Be interesting to see how that goes compared to the Mafel in terms of power. It's certainly a powerful machine, 1400 watts, isn't it? Yeah. I'll tell you what it has got. It's got a soft start on it, um, basically, so that you can run it on a 13 amp fuse. Right. That's a UK domestic, um, without blowing that fuse. Because if you start that up, you know sometimes, have you got an angle grinder that's um, around the sort of that? So if I'm using my um, nine, inch nine inch circular saw, and I'm running on a cable that's mm. plugged into a circuit, which has got a particularly, not a brilliant um, earth or something like that. It yeah. just pops the uh, breaker straight away. Yeah. So yeah. That's yeah. that startup surgeon, yeah, isn't exactly, it? Yeah, yeah. yeah. Well, well, basically, that's a little bit of overcurrent, isn't it, really? I think, yeah. you know. Uh, so, so this has got something that stops that. So every time it starts up, it starts up a little bit more gently than, than the others. It's got electronic speed control yes it's, it's got, got a speed control here identical to the other one identical to the uh, mafel this has got a two-stage setting to take you on and off the track so that you can dial down to wherever you're going it does have the uh, minus one degree obviously yeah. you loosen off your um, the bevels here and then oh you, no you've got two you press the tabs here you've got two there's, yeah. a, there's another difference then because on the mefl you've got one knob yeah one at the front 
this one doesn't have that rod going through the middle. So he goes over there and then what happens? Sorry. So um, so that's obviously to take it around to 45 degrees. Then the fell will travel around to 48 by pressing a button just on the side here. But if you were if you were wanting to do a, a minus one degree cut, yeah. we, we, basically there's a button here, it's hard to make it out. And there's another one on the back. So if you press them, you just crack you, and then you come back one degree if you just want to do that one that's just slightly out of cut, a scribe cut. Oh yeah, 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 yeah. Gotcha, gotcha. Yeah. But that's um, and then when you go back up, you should click in. Yeah. Yeah, just click back. That's it now. Did it? Because yeah, because I, I didn't hear it. You release it. You can hear it release there, and it, you can't hear it come out. You can see it by turning it around towards there. When you press the button in, and it comes back one degree. Okay. It will come back, but it has no sound. Yeah. It doesn't click. Yeah. Okay. So it does give you that. Okay. Um, what else is notable about it? Has it got that slide out marker on there? No, it hasn't got no, that. No, it's got an indent to give you the, the zero yeah, and, the, and the 45 degree. So instead of having that little slide out marker that the other one's got, which quite honestly is not a major feature for me. No, but it's what it's nice about, yeah, what's nice about it, if you're doing something at 30 degrees or 25 yeah. degrees, it's moving out in accordance with that. So that's quite nice. It's, that's proper precision. That is proper precision. So this would be a proper precision tool if it wasn't for the fact. It's a little it bit rocky. Really, a little bit rocky. I think we're being charitable. Anyway, look, we're going to take that out. We're going to give it a go because we've got it. So why wouldn't we? But actually, hold up. There's the Allen key. The Allen key. That's for the rail. The, the Allen key they give you for the rail. And incidentally, just like a lot of the, the other rail saws, the blade change Allen key in the handle. Two keys, two keys, one joining strip, two rails, quite a nice kit, quite honestly. Do you know what? I'm a bit disappointed really because I would have liked to have liked that more. Okay. I feel robbed. So while Roger puts the end back onto the rail, since we slid on the little junction, there you go. Roger's put the end back on the rail. We're going to take this out. We're going to run it up. We're going to do some cuts with it. We're going to really see, see what it's good for. So, okay, this is a brand new tool, brand new rail. So first thing I've got to do is just make that cut through the rubber, sacrificial cut if you like, just to get rid of the excess so that the blade is matched perfectly with the, the guide. So we should have a little bit more. I just want to see how much we've got there. Now that should go through. That should go through. So let's just stick that back up to that point. Okay, ready. Wish me luck. Set this down, 40 millimeters, let's go 41. Let's have a look at the breakout, shall we? Because certainly the power was here. I don't think you'd argue with the power. And you certainly wouldn't argue with that breakout at all. Do you know what? I mean, despite the fact that that's got this little bit of a warp in the, in the base there, it didn't actually cause as much problem as I thought it might cause. And that cut is absolutely beautiful actually it's 
even though they talk about the Mafel having this Kubrix motor in it that gives you higher torque, you saw that go through there, that didn't struggle. I'm gonna get Robin down, give, let him have a go, just see what he thinks of it, because um, my feeling is it's got plenty of power, and um, once you once you get it, it's almost it's almost a better machine if you run it faster, if you drive it a little bit hard. Being a bit hesitant, it kind of rattles away a bit, but if you just give it some work to do, it seems to enjoy it. Okay, Robin, I've had a go of it. Uh, I'm not gonna tell you what I think, you have a go. And we'll set up. Depth is good, some extraction, automatic, boom. That's set dead on 40, by the way. Well, my first impressions are that it handled it perfectly, to be fair. In fact, it was quite easy to push it through. There wasn't a lot of resistance. The motor wasn't really struggling or anything like that. I think it's a, um, it's just a robust bit of kit, I'd say. I mean, the blade, let's have a quick look at the blade. How many teeth has it got? I mean, it's got a lot of teeth. They're almost negative rake as well. Sort of look like an aluminium blade almost, and what you'd cut aluminium with. But um, yeah, I mean, it has, a, all of these things have a lot to do with the blade, there's no doubt about that. But yeah, I mean, that was, it was all right. When you look at it and people say, okay, it's very, very similar to the Mafel, yeah, in many respects. Um, it hasn't got quite the refinements, hasn't got that micro adjustment for the depth and so on. But actually, even though the Mafel's got that Cooper X motor, which is supposed to give you that high torque, supposed to be really a good workhorse, that seems to be as good. I mean, it didn't struggle, did it? You're, you're sort of getting something which is assembled with some pedigree. Yeah. It's got some fairly nice looking parts, parts which are very similar to the, li like the, the one who's they're the... They're identical. They're identical, identical to, to Mafel. Have a look at this cut here, yeah? Just look at this, Robin, here. Yeah. I mean, yeah, I mean... But just, just look at that, right? Have a look along here and tell me what the breakout's like because there isn't any, really. And if you think about the fact that that's moving slightly on that base plate. This base plate we've established has got a little bit of a deformity. It's actually rock and rolling. A big, a big deformity, I'd say. Yeah, so I mean. Um, I'd, I'd be sending that back if yeah, I got that. I mean, to be fair to them, you know, you're gonna, you're gonna have some issues in manufacture. It might have been knocked or whatever. So, you know, I mean, considering yeah, all but things. Come on, come on, come on, let's, let's, you know, again, this is making excuses. The thing is that it's straight out of the factory. Who's checked it? Who's checked it? Is that the difference sometimes? Is, it, is, it, is the money you pay in the quality control? Is it, you know, because I know for Hilti, for example, I've been to the Hilti factory, every single tool that they produce is put through a test machine. It's put through a test rig. They, they measure the parameters of it, everything, even the vibration, you know, mm. down to, so if it's a fault, they find it in a factory mm. rather than giving it to the customer and they're going, oh, send it back, it's no good, which is what a lot of people are doing with quality control now to cut costs down. They're not it, doing that quality check in the factory. They're letting the consumer do it. But if you do a quality control in a factory, it costs money. It's yeah. got to cost money, hasn't it? It's got to cost money to take that off the production line, put it through all those tests and then put it in a box absolutely past 100%. So that's obviously not happening. So maybe the difference between that Bosch and the Mafel some of it is in the quality control. They say, keep the cost down, shove it through. But that shouldn't have gone through, should it? No, right. definitely not. Because I mean, it's, um, you know, the base of a saw should be completely flat to start with. If it ends up like that because you dropped it, well, that's your fault. But it's, it's, got, it's got to be flat. I mean, actually, you know, you should have full contact with your work. You know, it should be running along in full contact. But having said that, it hasn't produced the catastrophic result that I expected. It's no. producing. I expect that to be a bit more ragged because yeah. of that movement, and it, and it's 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 beautiful. That is, yeah, you know, we just cut this this rail for the first time, by the way. So that rubber is absolutely spot on, yeah. pristine. So that's that's basically first cut. Actually, um, brand new blade. Talking new about sword. talking about this, which looks just like the Mafel rail. The Mafel rail is the only rail which you don't have to do that actually on. It's already run off. Did you know that? No, I didn't know yeah, that. Yeah, it's already run off in a factory. You sure? Pretty sure. Jody's coming tomorrow yeah. to collect it, and I'm yeah. going to ask him. You ask him. I will. You ask him. <laughs> 
So don't forget, if you're interested in track source, we've got this big review coming up where we're going to be looking at all the major brands and most popular track source, and we'll be bringing you that roundup pretty soon. We will.